Ah, oh, man, we love families. We really do. And uh, hopefully, how many people had a chance to hang out with family yesterday? It was kind of a family day. Awesome. So a 4th of July weekend is definitely family day. And uh, I I took it kind of easy. Our family had kind of a crazy week. And so I was in bed by 930. Unfortunately, my neighborhood was not. And uh, and so I, I, I think the booms ended at about 12.30 12.30 or 1 in the morning, roughly, every something that a pastor loves on a Saturday night is, you know, being kept up so he can get up early on top of that. And, um, and it was funny because I woke up this morning and there were just, it's like God knew what I needed, right? Like, like I just needed this chirping, calm, sunny morning and it was better than sunny. There was like a golden glow, you know, it's like heaven just opened up and it was a golden glow everywhere. And I'm like, this is so fantastic. God gave me a gl- golden glow on the morning. And then I realized that it's smog. Um, it's just explosive firework debris still in the air, you know, and everything else. And I'm like, oh, this is just as good. All right. So rode my motorcycle here to the church. I, I, was, I was happy to see that we still had a town. Uh, it didn't burn down yesterday. I was excited about that. Uh, all the way, didn't see a single, so it was just great, and, and, and so kind of pulling in, I, I was reminded of the blessing that we have, we really do, what we had the opportunity to do yesterday and throughout the weekend is we had the opportunity to celebrate this profound concept called freedom. I mean, freedom is a powerful thing. I I think sometimes when you grow up in a context of pretty bold freedom, you you maybe don't always appreciate it as much until it really confronts you and you you see it clearly and then you mark it against other things and you go, wow, um, yeah, not everybody has the freedom that I have. Freedom is a powerful thing. And I was thinking about it as a kid. Um, you, you don't fully appreciate the full range of freedom. It's like you grow into little different stages of freedom. You realize that this freedom is smaller than this next ring of freedom and then to the next ring of freedom. In fact, as a kid, I can remember clearly my first understanding of freedom. In fact, I think we have a slide for that right here. Let's go ahead and bring up that first picture in this. That is our introduction, Summer Freedom. Uh, but right there, that was my first taste of freedom, right? I remember as a kid, man, like, because I was not a good student. I was not attentive to things like grades or homework. Who does that? I have better things to do like socialize and play. So um, when summer came, it was like freedom, man. I remember in elementary school, we would get on the bus that last day, right? It's that last class. Your teacher's just passing out candy. You did so good. Everybody gets an award for everything, right? So um, that last day in elementary school, and you get on the bus, and it's just Lord of the Flies, right? Kids are screaming, yelling, excited. You got that one kid that just comes in your face, you know, like, like they're just all pumped up. It's like they're drunk on summer freedom, you know? And, and that is what I remember as a kid. And I don't even understand why I was so excited about summer freedom because I lived in Arizona, you know, like, like, like it's summer. Welcome to hell, you know? And, and, and we would play in this field behind our apartments. We'd camp out in the field. We'd play in this big ditch. And man, there was like rattlesnakes and scorpions. And like the whole desert has developed to kill you. But it was freedom, right? We could do whatever we want. We could build forts, have dirt clawed fights. It was just freedom. And that was my first taste of freedom. And I remember I loved that freedom. Every summer I couldn't wait for summer freedom. But then as I was a little bit older, made it into high school, I still appreciated summer freedom. I started to appreciate other freedoms like the freedom to drive, the freedom to have a job and have some money. So I had some fiscal freedom, more freedoms. But then it was probably about my junior or senior year that I really began to understand the next symbol of profound freedom in my life. And that symbol is this next slide right here. It is that symbol of freedom. And and as a kid, you don't fully appreciate it until you start to move into adulthood, until you start to study other cultures and other groups of people and the way other countries have designed themselves. And, And from that, you start to finally get a grasp on, wow, this place has been a beacon of freedom in a way that the world had not really seen. And so as... An American, I was like, wow, we, we really do have freedoms. And in those freedoms, we have responsibilities. And so I began to really uh, have a better sense of what freedom is all about. 
But then a, a little while later, probably kind of my senior year, kind of the first year out of high school, I, I came to really embrace probably the most profound symbol of freedom, more profound even than this symbol, which is a profound symbol. It's our next slide here. Um, that's when I really realized that through Christ there is tremendous freedom. In Christ, we have amazing freedom. Freedom from penalty because he has paid the penalty for us. Freedom from the consequence of our penalty because he has served that time. Freedom to be free from the, the, the vices and challenges of my life. I mean, this is a profound symbol of freedom. Jesus has freed us indeed. And so when I link all of these together, it's what is kind of the highlight of my talk this morning. It's all about this freedom summer, right? To really leverage the next few months of our lives to appreciate all of that freedom. In fact, if anything, I'm kind of making it the freedom trifecta. We are in the summer. We live in a culture that gives us the freedom to exercise our faith, and therefore we should celebrate our freedom in Christ. Because what I realize is I've been in the Northwest now for uh, over uh, just about 25 years, right? August will be 25 years. And in the Northwest, summer is this, it's like a holiday in and of itself for us. Right? Like, we, we, we feel like we're secluded for months on end, and so it's summer. We're like, ah, oh, summer. We're like those elementary school kids on the bus. Summer! And we go rushing out into our world, and, and it's very easy sometimes to kind of become sluggish spiritually. Right? To, to be so busy doing and going and hanging and functioning that that we almost come back to the fall, like, oh yeah, I need to kind of get rounded out spiritually again. And, and, and so what I want to encourage this morning is that we leverage the summer, the freedom of summer, with the freedom of our society to celebrate and grow deeply in our freedom in Christ. And so I'm just going to share five little things. I'm not going to take a lot of time. This will be the shortest message Matt has ever preached. But... Um, it's because it's going to be the last one Matt preaches for a few months. So we might as well make it short and make it good. All right. Um, but I want to give five encouragements over the course of this summer where you enjoy, you celebrate, you experience, and you express your freedoms. And, and partly I say this because uh, we all love the fact that we live in a country that's free. But freedom is only as useful as we use it. And I don't want us simply to say, we're free. I want us to experience freedom. And, and so I want to give five encouragements over the summer where you can experience all of the freedom that you are designed to experience, particular to your relationship to Christ. And so the first encouragement I want to give all of us this morning is that you use your freedom, the freedom of summer, the freedom of being an American, the freedom that you have in Christ. Use your freedom as an opportunity to make much of God. Use your freedom as an opportunity to make much of God. The Heidelberg Catechism, right, this, this tool that was used by Christians to ask a question and give an answer about a truth of God, that's what a catechism is. It asks a question and then it gives an answer and it's a tool that we use to learn. The Heidelberg Catechism said the chief end of man is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. To give God glory and to enjoy who God is. That's what we're built for. And I think summer in the Northwest is an amazing time to celebrate the wonders of God. It is, we have the best summers anywhere. Like I said, I grew up in Arizona. Not the best summer. Worst summer. Right? Arizona summers really, it, it drives you to the gospel. I don't want to end up here eternally. So, um, I don't. So, I don't, want to, I don't want to go to hell because that's like going to Phoenix. I don't want to go to Phoenix in July. I don't want to go to hell ever. So I, I want to go to heaven, which is like Seattle in summer. All right, so a great thing to do with these great summers of our, our, ours are to celebrate his wonder in Psalm 19. It starts in verse 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night it reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words where their voice is not heard. It says their voice goes out to all the earth and their words to the ends of 
the world. Like I said, we have one of the greatest environments. We have these incredible forests and these grand mountains, right? On both sides of us, they flank us. And you look up in the night sky and you see nothing but stars. We, we live out a little ways. We're not in the center of a city. We can see the great wonders of the Milky Way before us. Out of my place, actually, on really dark nights, you can actually see the Milky Way. You can see that little band going across. You can wake up in the morning before the sun peaks over the Cascades and you can find just a nice place to perch and watch these incredible sunsets that point out the great peaks of the mountains. You can hike incredible trails. You can see all sorts of wildlife. My neighbors, um, they have all these bees right now for honey and I, I just, I'm mesmerized by the fact that bees spit and I eat it. That's incredible, you know? And it tastes good. So I I look at all of that, and all of that is God flexing. All of that should cause us to just stand in wonder and awe. And if you have a scientific background in any way, all the more you should just be in awe. You think about the, the function of gravity in relationship to the galaxy, and you think about all these stars, and you think about what it takes for each of those to burn bright, and all the more you go, God's handiwork is incredible. I encourage us as we go through the summer, as we're out and about, that we should talk of those things. If, if you have kids in the home, you should talk about the wonders of God in those things, that you should give God glory as you go about and do what you do, as you go fishing or boating or whatever it is. Make much of God. It is so easy sometimes to just kind of go and do and play and have our fun and not stop and stand in wonder. One of the things, uh, we don't get a chance to do it very often, but like in the winter, for example, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go snowboarding with my brother-in-law. And, and one of the things he's great about is at some point in the day, we'll just stop because I'm old and I get tired fast. And, and we're laying there in the snow and he'll just, he'll just say, I, I, let's just pray. And he just prays. And he thanks God for snow and creation and beauty. And we should do those kinds of things. Just stand in awe at the wonders of God because they proclaim his character. They proclaim his handiwork. They proclaim his care and his ingenuity. And so don't don't let the summer go by without experiencing the wonder of God, celebrating those wonders. Talk about it, right? Really talk about it because sometimes I find that I can have this internal like, wow, God, you're amazing. But if I'm hanging out with my kids or my wife or friends, I should highlight that. Because that's a part of glorifying God. It's speaking to his creative power. And so my first encouragement is use your freedom as an opportunity to make much of God. My second encouragement for us this summer to experience our freedoms is use your freedom as an opportunity to read the Bible. Right? Use this summer as an opportunity to bond with the book, right? And, and there's all sorts of ways that you can bond with the book, all right? I mean, even sometimes it's not directly with the book. Maybe something you want to do, if you're kind of leveraging nature a little bit more, uh, man, grab your listening device and download podcasts, right? Just listen to really great preachers or speakers on things pertaining to God or Scripture or truth. Just do that. One of the things I have on my phone is this great Bible app, Um, where I can just listen to the Bible, right? And I'll just sit on my back porch and I'm just looking at the woods and just enjoying just God's creation and I'll just sit there and listen to the Psalms. Just do that. That's a great way to do it. A lot of us are doing Smash Bible, right? And so we're moving along and maybe some of you are like, I've gotten a little behind, which is totally fine, right? But now is your chance to maybe catch up a little bit. Get up a little bit earlier. Besides, the sun is waking you up earlier and keeping you up later, right? So just just sit down with God's Word and and, and just go back and catch up with Smash Bible. Or something that I've decided to do, I'm going back over my previous Smash Bible stuff, and I'm just calling it a highlight reel, right? I'm just going back through and like, why did I highlight that? Oh, that's right. Um, Or why didn't I highlight that? Or, oh, that stands out more than I saw the last time. So that's a way to do it. Another one that you might consider, this is something that we have in our home, the Action Bible, all right? Um, This thing's great. It's just a giant comic book of the Bible, right? But if you have kids in the home that are younger, this is a great way to go through the Bible. Uh, You know, just sit out on the back porch or on your front patio or out in the lawn or whatever else and just go through this together. This sticks for our kids, 
My son, who's 15, he's like, I so better understand when I re- read a regular Bible because of this. Right? And so that's the thing that you can do, where you're just making much of God's word in whatever form or function that you decide to do that with. Right? Talk about the Bible. Talk about what you read that day or what you learned that day or some verse that you're pondering or whatever else. Just create conversations. One of the things I'm, I'm starting to do is I, I'm taking walks and I'm just taking my Bible with me on my walks. And I'll just walk for a little ways or whatever else, and then I'll just stop and I'll just open up to some random place and I'll just read. Right? Out in God's creation, listening to God's word here is I'm surrounded by God's proclamation around me. Right? That's another way you can do it. Another thing we're doing as a family, and this is kind of cool, is we're sitting on the back porch and we're reading through the Chronicles of Narnia just out loud as a family. Right? And, and it's not a Bible book. It's not necessarily a direct Bible story, but indirectly it is a powerful presentation of the message of the Bible. And so we even talk about some of that. Right? It's a great opportunity in the summer because, listen, there's nothing on TV. It's all reruns, man. Right? So just turn off the TV. Don't worry about any of that. Just hang. Talk. Discuss God's word. Get back to the book. Bond with the book. It's an awesome way to celebrate your freedoms. Start taking your Bible maybe to work. A lot of us, you know, we'll we'll take lunch outside or our breaks outside because it's nice outside. Take your Bible with you. Take it outside. Read it for a couple of minutes. Bond with the book, right? Use your freedom as an opportunity to read the Bible more. That's the second encouragement. My third encouragement, use your freedom as an opportunity to connect with other Christians, right? Use your freedom as an opportunity to connect with other Christians. In Hebrews chapter 10, it says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, in one sense, here's my encouragement for summer. Man, if you're in town, make church a priority, right? Make it a priority, because it's really easy. It's like, ah, it's summer. We're doing stuff. We get really, really busy, and and we start to kind of just neglect those things, and there is something that God does and uses and blesses in the context of being a part of the local church and coming on Sunday and hearing God's word collectively. There's just something God does in that, and I believe in that, but even aside from that, we as a people should try to figure out how we can connect just a little bit more, right? So maybe it's simple things like you put together a play date with another family whose kids are in Sunday school. You just say, hey, we're all going to go to Judd Park, you know, so let's just do that. And you get a chance to be together with other Christians in kind of a real-life, regular way. Or maybe you find a couple or a family or a person that you don't know very well at Redemption, and you just have them over for a barbecue. Once a month, you just set aside a Sunday afternoon just to invite somebody over to hang out and get to know somebody that you don't know as well. Another thing we're doing over the course of the summer as a church is we're having this RC Summer Sundays where, uh, like, on different Sundays, and I think it was passed out today, there's just different events after church. They're low-key, they're easy to kind of grab onto, but it's a great way to get to know people in the church in a different sort of way. It's just connecting. Because more and more, I find that that connection with one another is deeply helpful. Just to even know that, hey man, other people are in the same phase of life as me, have the same challenges, face the same fears, have the same concerns, and it's kind of strong shoulders for one another. And so we want to make that investment. And so encouragement one is what? Just see God, express God, glorify God. Because God is good and he's created everything around us to declare himself. Second encouragement, man, get into your word more. Get into the Bible more over the course of summer. And and part of that, in Psalm 19, I didn't read the passage about that, but it talks about how the law of the Lord, it refreshes the heart, it purifies the soul, it gives strength to our lives. Man, uh, sometimes we're so focused on summer being a time of rest that we miss out on some of the greatest rest comes through God's word speaking into us. And then the third encouragement is connect with other Christians throughout the summer. You have a great environment to do it in with nice weather and hanging out on patios and 
as you do that, having intentional conversations, right? Just like, what's God doing in your life? Or, you know, how can I pray for you? Just simple things like that are a way that we can all connect together. That is the third encouragement. The fourth encouragement. Use your freedom as an opportunity to be proud of Jesus. Use your freedom as an opportunity to be proud of Jesus. I don't simply mean to be evangelistic or to share your faith. I'm I'm going a little deeper than that. I'm talking about legitimately saying, I'm just proud of Jesus. I just just love him. I follow him. He, He matters more than anything to me, and I want to take opportunity to be proud of him. I think about Paul in Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. He says, But far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, Paul, here's this guy. He's a smart guy. He has all kinds of things he could do, but his life is consumed by boasting in Christ. Not just sharing him, not just being responsible to the task of evangelism or or evangelism or being missional. He wants to boast. He wants to boast because he's so proud of Jesus. Earlier in Galatians, he says, I have been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And so he has this bond with Jesus where he's just proud of Jesus. This is what I love about his take in Romans 15. In Romans 15, starting at verse 17, he says, In Christ Jesus then, I have reason to be proud of my work for God. For I would not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed. And then he drops down into verse 20. He says, thus I make it my ambition to preach the gospel. Right? So in other words, for Paul, again, it's not responsibility. It's not like that's what good Christians do. They share their faith. No, he he just can't help it. He's so proud of Jesus. And my encouragement is because we have tremendous freedom, freedom of summer, freedom in our society, and our freedom in Christ. Boast about Jesus. Be proud of Jesus as you're out about the summer. There's different things you can do. If you take your kids to the park, you know what? Wear a Redemption Church t-shirt or have your RC sticker on your stroller or whatever it is. Like, conversation starters are easy when when church is the conversation starter because people are like, what's that about? Or bring your Bible with you and be reading it at the park while your kids are playing. It's a conversation starter, trust me. I've tried it at the bar. It works awesome. Um, And and so, uh, you know, those are just simple things that, that we can do to make much of Jesus and to celebrate who he is in our lives. Maybe it's something like if you get, you're hanging out with your kids, going to the park if your kids are younger, bring Bible camp flyers and just invite a friend. Say, hey, we're, our church is doing this thing. It'd be awesome if your kids want to go. It's just a simple way to be proud of Jesus. Maybe you invite a, a neighbor over to the house and have a barbecue and maybe they're not believers and it's not some heavy thing. You just pray for the meal and, and they'll notice you prayed for your meal. That's different. That's cool. It's non-threatening, whatever it might be. Maybe your regroup can get together this summer. We have a, a thing we call Serve, where we will give $1,000 to a regroup to do something for the community. Whatever your thing might be, right? So you don't even have to think like it has to be a spiritual thing for the community. It could be something else. Uh, one of the groups have, have gotten together, and they're putting in a water fountain at Judd Park just for the good of the community. Uh, we did a thing kind of partnering with um, Old Rock Brewery to do something for the dog park, right? So it's just different ways that we try to bless our city, right? But those are ways that we can be proud of Jesus and bring practical things to the environment. So just do things like that. Figure out, man, how can I be proud of Jesus? Because neighbors are out in their yards. You're hanging out in the cul-de-sac. You're out at the park. You're out at different sporting events, baseball, whatever it is, and use that as an opportunity just to be proud of Jesus, right? That's a great way to leverage your freedom this summer. And then last, fifth, my encouragement to all of us. Use your freedom as an opportunity to rest and to reflect spiritually. Use your freedom as an opportunity to rest and reflect spiritually. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus says, starting in verse 28, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. But then immediately he says something, and this catches my attention. At that time, Jesus went out through the grain fields 
on the Sabbath. Now, now why this sticks out to me is that I've always loved this passage in Matthew 11. Yes, go to Jesus for rest. And there's a difference between breaks and rest. We typically take a lot of, quote, breaks in summer. Usually they're called family vacations where we're all exhausted, right? Um, so there's no rest. But, but rest that Jesus offers is something different. It's rest of the soul. It's rest of the anxiety. It's rest of the crazy of life. It's just slowing down and giving it over to him. We just learned this in Peter last week, right? Cast all your cares on him. Throw the baggage his way. Say, take it all. That's what we want to do. Jesus, take all of this stuff, and I just want to rest in you. He says, come to me. I want to take your stuff. Come to me. I want to give you rest. Come to me. My yoke is light. He says all of that, but then immediately he says uh, this thing about the Sabbath. And, and they're linked for a reason, and the reason is, is because Jesus really is the true Sabbath. Right? This is one of the things he's trying to teach his culture that uh, you know, they've been locked into a certain way of understanding Sabbath, which wasn't wrong, but he is now a fuller Sabbath, a fuller rest. And in that sense, we want to go to Jesus as our fuller rest. We, we sometimes think if I can just unplug the brain and unplug everything and, and just go numb, I'm getting rest. And there's a certain truth to that. But, but I also find that, that there is a, a, a deeper truth that says, you know what, when I take just a little, bit, a little bit of time in the morning or some afternoon in the week or a time of a day or whatever to just, just pray, just think, just decompress my stuff, pray through the stuff that is a strain or the stuff that I'm worried about or the stuff that is heavy. And I'm just like, Jesus, there, there's this with the kids and there's this with Ellen and there's this with the church and there's this with my own life and man there is rest there there is rest I think sometimes we don't slow down even to decompress we're always turning something on or plugging something in we're always listening or watching or whatever and just sometimes we just need to back up and, and say I just I don't need to vegetate I, I, I need to ruminate on Jesus that's what I need Right? That's a way to rest. That's one way it would encourage us to rest and reflect. Another way, honestly, is just enjoy the little things. Again, summertime, we can start feeling very busy. We start trying to go out to the lake and go hiking and go do these different things and work in the yard and everything else. My encouragement is, you know what, just kind of take evenings to just hang out as a family, maybe some friends, and just go Ecclesiastes, man. Right? Eat good food, drink good wine, enjoy your family. Just relax. It's Ecclesiastes. Just because you know what? Life is tough enough. And to just slow down a little bit and create pockets of just calm and enjoyment. That's what our family does. We just sit on the back porch, you know, all of all the little bulb lights all around the porch. It's just kind of a warm environment. And we just sit there and we talk and we laugh and we play a board game or whatever else. And we try to pick board games that don't start family feuds. Um, you know. Don't play Risk, all right? That's a piece of advice. Um, but but just, just enjoy the simple things. Enjoy the simple things. We sometimes complicate life. We get very busy trying to create enjoyment. And I find sometimes the greatest enjoyment is just the little things sitting around a fire. Not right now because it's burn ban, I know. But, you know, sitting around a pile of glow sticks, all right? How about that? So... See, my bottom line is just leverage the summer in your freedoms, right? Use your freedom. 1 Peter 2.16 says, live as people who are free. He says, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, and I would probably add outside of the Bible, don't squander it by distraction. Don't squander your freedom through distraction or busyness. He says, but live as servants of God. We have a great opportunity over the next few months in our freedom, the freedom of good weather, the freedom to kind of choose our path a little easier on schedule and that kind of thing. So use it. Enjoy him. Enjoy one another. Enjoy his word. Enjoy his creation. Enjoy the grace he's shown us. Let's go ahead and pray together. Jesus, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your freedom. I thank you for the freedom of our culture and I know right now it's, it's even for some, they, they get a little nervous about freedom. And, and are, are there going to be the same freedoms in the future that there are presently? And, 
And I look and I go, you know, if we're not utilizing our freedoms, if we're not using our freedom to read your word, our freedom to share our faith, freedom to worship you, if we're not using them, then we shouldn't be concerned about losing them. I pray that we would be users of our freedoms and that we will draw deep into you, that we will cleave richly to you, that we will long more for you, that we will be desperate to experience you. And so I pray that we will live truly in the freedom that you have graced us with in you. I ask these things in your good and kind name. Amen.